Welcome to the world famous Satish Dhawan Space Center, Shah, popularly known as SDSE Shah. The center is a proud member of the Team ISRO, responsible for launching the space missions of India. The center has successfully launched a very large number of diverse space missions, which include remote sensing, communication, navigation, and science satellites. The successful space exploration missions like Chandrayaan-1, Mars Orbiter Mission, and India's reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator, RLV TD have all been launched from here. The story of this center dates back to the days of the great visionary Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, under whose leadership the Indian space program first embarked on the journey for the development of satellites and launch vehicles for bringing the benefits of the space technology to the common man. A strong need was felt at that time to set up a suitably located rocket launch station. East Coast was preferred, as eastward launch would need less energy and also avoid rocket travelling over the mainland during the initial phase. It was necessary that the station should also be far from populated areas. Importance was accorded to a location, which would be advantageous for equatorial launches, in 1969, the spindle-shaped coastal island of Sri Harikota in the Nellore district of Andhra Pradesh, situated by beautiful Pulikat Lake and sandwiched between Buckingham Canal on the west and Bay of Bengal on the east, was zeroed on. The development of launch center and launch vehicle technology began hand-in-hand with the determination to achieve self-reliance in launching all classes of satellites in the required orbits. From the days of sounding rockets, ISRO has toiled hard to indigenously develop this highly internationally safeguarded technology. An important milestone was reached in 1980 when this center launched the first experimental satellite launch vehicle SLV-3, capable of placing a payload of 40 kilograms in low Earth orbit. This was followed by yet another success in 1992 with the launch of augmented satellite launch vehicle ASLV designed for launching 150 kilograms payloads into 400 kilometer circular orbits. ISRO further applied its energy for the advancement of launch vehicle technology, which resulted in the creation of its workhorse, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. The first successful flight of PSLV D2 took place from here in October 1994. In 2002, the center was renamed after another great Professor Satish Dhawan, the former chairman of ISRO. Shri P. Kunnikrishnan is the present director. The center has kept pace with the requirements of launching larger rockets and the facilities here were gradually expanded to meet the growing needs of the nation. Team ISRO is proud of its fleet of launch vehicles which places most of our satellites in the orbit. The Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle, GSLV, GSLV Mark III, and now the recent success of reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator, RLV-TD, are the result of the hard work put in by the scientists of ISRO over generations. SDSA Shah has also grown alongside, developed many new facilities for the large number of launches. Today, it is one of the best known names among the space ports of the world. The center has two satellite launch complexes, each equipped with liquid propulsion, including cryogenic propellant fueling, fuel storage and servicing, integration and assembly of rocket stages, 
satellite preparation, checkout and launch operations. The first launch pad was built in the early 1990s, primarily for launching the PSLV. A few hours before the launch, the MST is moved away from launch pad on a rail track. Following the final remote checkout and fueling operations through the umbilical tower, the vehicle takes off. The second launch pad was developed to accommodate the PSLVs, GSLVs and also the future launch vehicle configurations such as GSLV Mark III. In this, the vehicle is assembled and checked on a mobile launch pedestal in the Vehicle Assembly Building, that is VAB. It is later moved to the launch pad on rails. This method reduces the pad occupancy and enables the vehicle to move back to VAB for protection in the event of any cyclone warning or other threat. Launch pad has a 70 meters tall umbilical tower, three vertically repositionable and swiveling access arms provide access to the vehicle. 83 meters tall, 40 meters long, and 32 meters wide VAB is equipped with six sets of foldable come vertically repositionable access platforms, a clean room and two cranes for handling loads. A kilometer long rail tracks connect the VAB and launch pad. Mobile launch pedestal, MLP, over which the vehicle is integrated is a 16-wheeled bogey with four jacks that would lift the launch pedestal and tow it to the tower on the rail tracks. A host of services like launch vehicle tracking, telemetry, telecommand, mission control, real-time flight data processing, satellite tracking and meteorology or weather forecasting facilities the Mission Control Center MCC and Launch Control Center LCC are situated about 6 kilometers away from the launch complexes. It coordinates and conducts the launch operations during the countdown phase until the injection of the satellite into the orbit. The MCC is linked to all the ground stations through communication links for voice and data transmission. The launch preparations on the vehicle are monitored from the MCC using a multi-channel closed-circuit television system. Let us now take you through a series of events in a typical launch of a PSLV. Despite this series of resounding successes, the engineering teams can never afford to relax their guard even for a moment. As the launch date approaches, one senses a palpable heightening of alertness and keenness in the air. As the rocket stages stack upwards, the excitement builds up almost in direct proportion. As the time for launch approaches, the vehicle blasts off from SDSE Sharp, taking its payloads majestically into the space. India's first mission to the moon, Chandrayaan-1, was launched on October 22, 2008. PSLV C-11 injected Chandrayaan-1 into a highly elliptical transfer orbit ETO measuring 250 by 22,000 kilometers. In the series of planned maneuvers, the orbit was raised in steps. The first event was that of lamb firing near the perigee, shifting the spacecraft to earthbound orbit EBN-1 of 300 by 37,000 kilometers. On the fourth day, Chandrayaan-1 was moved into EBN-2 of 336 by 74,000 kilometers. The next day, the spacecraft's orbit was raised to EBN-3 of 348 by 1,65,016 kilometers. 
On the sixth day after launch, Chandrayaan-1 was shifted to EBN-4 of 460 by 2,66,612 kilometers. After staying in this orbit for nearly six days, on November 3, 2008, the spacecraft was pushed into EBN-5 of 977 by 3,79,454 kilometers. It was for the first time that ISRO was stepping out of the Earth's orbit to explore the space beyond. Navigating into deep space for about five more days, the spacecraft entered the lunar sphere of influence on November 8, 2008. When the spacecraft was about 500 kilometers above the lunar surface, a very critical lunar orbit insertion maneuver was carried to place Chandrayaan-1 in the lunar polar orbit. On the 22nd day, first of its 11 payloads, Moon Impact Probe, MIP, was commissioned. On November 14, 2008, MIP acquired first images of the surface of the Moon ever taken by any Indian mission. The 35 kg MIP with the colors of the Indian flag painted on it. Touched down on the lunar surface at 8.31 p.m. IST. It is known to have landed in the South Pole Aitken Basin of the Moon. The Mars Orbiter mission envisages sending an unmanned spacecraft to Mars and putting it into an orbit around the planet, conducting modest yet meaningful exploration of its surface, atmosphere and the space environment in its vicinity through the spacecraft is the main scientific objective of the Mars Orbiter mission. However, the primary goal of the mission is mainly technological and aims to demonstrate the technological capability of India to send a spacecraft to orbit around the Red Planet. The Mars Orbiter mission spacecraft is shaped like a cuboid and weighs 1,340 kgs at launch. Special alloys and composite materials have been used to build the skeletal structure of the spacecraft. Its inside temperature will be kept within safe operating limits using a host of materials including a bright golden colored multi-layer insulation blanket. The three solar panels projecting from one of its sides of the Mars Orbiter Mission spacecraft generate about 800 watts of electric power near Mars. The journey of the Mars Orbiter Mission spacecraft to the Red Planet is a challenging as well as an exciting one indeed. The launch window, the interval of time during which the spacecraft can be efficiently launched to Mars in 2013, extends from October 28th to November 19th. The mission to launch India's first Mars spacecraft happens to be the 25th launch of the versatile and well-proven PSLV and is designated as PSLV C-25. The launch is scheduled to take place from the first launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center at Sri Harikota, the space port of India. After its liftoff, it will take about 42 minutes for PSLV C-25 to place the Mars Orbiter Mission spacecraft into an elliptical orbit around the Earth. For the first time, ship-borne ground station terminals stationed in the Pacific Ocean will be used to monitor the performance of the PSLV's fourth stage as well as the separation of the Mars Orbiter Mission spacecraft from that stage. This parking orbit extends 250 kilometers on one side and 23,500 kilometers on the other side from the surface of the Earth. Later, the liquid apogee motor LAM which is the main rocket engine of Mars Orbiter Mission spacecraft, will be repeatedly fired to ultimately make the spacecraft 
follow a path to encounter Mars by September 2014 in its orbit. During its 300-day journey to Mars, the spacecraft will leave Earth's sphere of influence when it will move beyond 1 million kilometers from Earth. Then, it will travel in a curved path mostly under the influence of the Sun. Finally, when the spacecraft is about half a million kilometers from Mars, it will come under the sphere of influence of Mars. As the spacecraft nears Mars after its 10-month-long journey, lasting millions of kilometers from Earth, its LAM will be fired again. This time, it will be to sufficiently slow down the spacecraft to enable it to be captured by Mars in an orbit around it. Once safely in an orbit around Mars, an intense observation of the red planet using its scientific payloads will begin. Besides the formidable challenges associated with the safe navigation of the spacecraft to Mars with minimum energy expenditure, many other daunting challenges confronted ISRO scientists at the time of building India's Mars spacecraft. Prominent among them were issues related to the radiation-intense environment in which the spacecraft has to operate during its lifetime and wide temperature variations which it has to tolerate. Another challenge was the reduction in the power generation capability of its solar panels due to low solar illumination near Mars, as a red planet lies much further away from the Sun. In addition, the critical role of the spacecraft propulsion system consisting of thrusters and LAM made them to take additional measures to enhance its reliability. Nevertheless, Based on their past experience, they confidently met those challenges and built the Mars Orbiter spacecraft in a record time of about a year. The result? India's trusted launch vehicle PSLV triumphantly waits to launch the spacecraft as a world watches. One of the prominent features of India's first Mars spacecraft is its ability to autonomously assess its health and take suitable actions at certain times to rectify problems on its own. This has been incorporated into the spacecraft due to the long communication delay time of up to a maximum of 42 minutes due to the enormous distances separating Earth and Mars. With two muscular solid strap-on boosters, a large liquid core stage and a homegrown cryogenic upper stage with powerful CE20 engine. It stands as tall as a 12-story building. This is the next version of GSLV launch vehicle of India, GSLV Mark III. The design of Mark III has been perfected and adapted using the experience gained over time in development of its predecessors. The structure of the Mark III was tested for the atmospheric regime of flight in 2014 when it carried a crew module to a height of 126 kilometers. Both its solid and liquid propulsion stages performed with textbook precision. The crew module later descended to Earth in a controlled manner and was successfully recovered from the Bay of Bengal. The overall length of the vehicle is 43.43 meters and its weight prior to liftoff is around 640 tons. The two large solid S200 boosters form the first stage of this vehicle. Each of these is 25.7 meters long and 3.2 meters in diameter containing around 204.35 tons of solid propellant. The boosters have a flex seal controlled nozzle which can also be used for steering the vehicle. The second stage or the core stage named L110 is around 21.39 meters long and 4 meters in diameter. It carries 112.2 tons of earth storable liquid propellants. It employs two clustered Vikas engines each of which are around 2.9 meters long and 1 meter in diameter. The third stage, cryogenic upper stage, is 13.5 meters long, 4 meters in diameter, and contains 27.5 tons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as cryogenic propellants, which provide higher thrust for the amount of propellant burned. 
That's why it is more efficient. The technical challenge is to manage the cryogens from their extreme low temperatures to their subsequent ignition and combustion. ISRO's newly developed CE20 engine is an answer to this challenge. It produces a thrust of around 186 kilonewtons. The encapsulated assembly at the top of the vehicle houses the payload adapter PLA, O-Drive Payload Fairing OLPF and the satellite. Mark III has a large fairing of a 5 meter diameter and is 10.7 meter long, having a volume of 121 meter cube sufficient to accommodate large satellites. The Mark III vehicle will lift off with a simultaneous ignition of both the solid boosters. At 114 seconds, the liquid core stage will be ignited. At 139.98 seconds, the boosters burn out and separate from the vehicle. At around 224.84 seconds, the payload fairing will be separated. The liquid core stage burns out by 317.12 seconds and will be separated from the vehicle. After two seconds, the C25 stage will ignite and will burn for almost 600 seconds. Subsequently, it will shut down at 964.72 seconds. A few seconds later, GSAT-19 will be injected into a GTO with its perigee at 170 kilometers and apogee at around 36,000 kilometers. Once the satellite reaches its final orbit, the solar panels and telecommunication antennas will be deployed. The PSLV C-37 mission is very special. In order to utilize its full capacity, the rocket this time will launch 104 satellites. Among its large number of foreign co-passenger nano-satellites, it will inject ISRO's Cartosat 2 series satellite and two ISRO nano satellites, INS-1A and 1B, each weighing around 9 kilograms into sun-synchronous polar orbits. This extraordinary mission has been very demanding for the engineering team and required lot of care in its design. The orbit determination of the satellites at the point of their separation from the launch vehicle will be carried out using onboard NAVIC receivers. INS-1A and 1B will be separated using the recently inducted ISRO wedge lock separation system called IWL-150. It will take around 1006 seconds for the rocket to reach the orbit. The separation process of all the satellites is planned to be captured using five cameras of the onboard video imaging system and would take 715 seconds to complete. PSL VC-37 with Cartosat 2 series spacecraft and 103 co-passenger nano-satellites lifted off majestically on 15th February 2017 at 9.28 hours IST from SDC Sharji Harikota, the spaceport of India. Ground list trap and separated. Air list trap and separated. Heat shield separated. Second stage separated. Third stage separated. Cartoset 2 series spacecraft injected into orbit. Two ISRO nano satellites INS 1A and 1B are injected into orbit. The separation of nano satellites can be viewed from both sides one after another.
World Space Week is celebrated across the world from 4th to 10th October to educate the students and general public about the benefits of space activities and space exploration and to kindle the scientific spirits of students in particular. A variety of public outreach programs will be organized throughout the world towards this. Indian Space Research Organization also joins other spacefaring nations and celebrates World Space Week every year. World Space Week celebrations of Savish Dhawan Space Center Shar has taken new wings this year by spreading its activities to three different states in the vicinity of Sri Harikota, namely Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Tamil Nadu. Sri P. Kunyakrishnan, Director SDSC Shar, flagged off the celebrations to 15 different venues, each having its own uniqueness to claim. Children from schools, no matter government or private, no matter urban or rural, they joined hands with us. They understood the real spirit of celebrations and have walked for World Space Week, proclaiming the celebrations that are to follow. The enthusiasm of the students and the seal with which they were shouting out slogans were a real boost to us. The whole city celebrated with us. It was their celebration as well. to the eyes, a storehouse of information, showcasing of our achievements and vision. That was the exhibition and video shows. As part of the Space Celebration Week, where our primary objective has been to reach out information about what we are doing in space technology, what ISRO is doing and also what world is doing in this. I am a chairman of the 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 chairman we bid adieu to you with great content. We could achieve our mission. You have welcomed us warmly. You have taken our vision close to your heart and had strived along with us to meet the objective. But it is not the end. It is a beginning to the gamut of celebrations that are to follow in the years to come. <laughs>